everybody. God bless you. It's Tuesday night. God has been good. And you're here with Chosen Generation Ministries Tuesday night Bible study. Praise God. The last Tuesday of September. Oh. If you had anything to do during the month of September, you have 24 hours and a bit to get it done. Amen. But the Lord has been good to us, and we're so <laughs> delighted to have each and every one of you with us this evening. Some people are really, really excited about their birth month. <laughs> Yes, and as they get older, they get a little more emotional, but we'll let them have their month, we'll let them have their day before, day of, and day after. God bless you all joining us this evening. Well, praise the Lord and God bless you everybody. I trust you have been having a great week so far. What a wonderful weekend we had. Perfect weather. Praise God. We had a little bit of church as well. Mm -hmm. Certainly we want to thank God that you you know. In the midst of joy, there is sorrow. And uh, we, we attended the funeral. My wife and I spent the day together, praise God, on Saturday. But we attended funerals, praise God. But we're certainly glad that the Lord has kept us. Uh, I'm not sure who came up with this. But somebody once said, any, any day above ground is a good day. And certainly, we want to thank the Lord for his goodness to all of us. Amen. Certainly, spared our lives and allowing us to see this brand new day certainly we thank the lord for his grace and for for his mercy and we pray that as we go through our session tonight that you will be blessed praise the lord if you haven't done so already you know it's tuesday night you know how we do it praise god i want you to go and invite everybody you can praise the lord they can get as much singing in they can get everything else in but this is the night where we dissect and 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 go into the word of the Lord. And so if you haven't done so, I'm encouraging you, praise the Lord, to invite a friend. Amen. It doesn't cost you anything to share the link, to start a watch party or to, you know, do what you got to do. If you're on our social media, wherever you are, Facebook, YouTube, or on the prayer line, praise God. Let somebody know it's time for the word. Amen. God bless you. We're going to pray this evening. And ask the Lord for his grace. And as we pray together, amen, remember those, maybe you know people we don't know. We could pray for them as well. Praise the Lord. Certainly we want to lift up uh, all the islands in the Caribbean, amen, before the Lord, especially my own country, Jamaica. Amen. I understand that there's some stir going on in Kingston again. And we want the Lord to intervene. Seems like it's taking its toll around around the island. Used to be St. James. Now it's Kingston, and I understand even Clarendon is trying to get into the picture. So we want to pray and ask the Lord, wherever you're from, Trinidad and Tobago, St. Vincent and the Greater Needs, King, St. Kitts, the Nevis, Barbados, amen. Even Guyana, if you want to, you know, want to put Guyana in there everywhere, Trinidad. pray for them. Pray, we want to ask the Lord to move in a mighty way tonight. Praise God, and especially our neighbors to the south. Those who are living in the, the divided states of America, mm-hmm. praise the Lord. We want the Lord to intervene, praise God, and to pray for those in leadership. The Bible said we must pray for them that we may lead a peaceable and a quiet life, regardless of your political persuasion. Amen. Remember that uh, uh, promotion coming neither from the east nor from the west, but God is judge. And so we believe that God is in control. Pray for all those who are running for office that the Lord will select the one that will help the church to further its its agenda and its role in this life. Pray, amen, for the UK, for Africa, for Asia, wherever you can. Why don't you pray with us at this time? Ladies, I'm going to ask you to pray for us. Praise God at this time. In Jesus' name, please bow your hands as we pray. Amen. Father, we want to thank you for this beautiful day that you have given us. Thank you for the freedoms that we enjoy in this country. We thank you for allowing us to be here, Lord God. It was your plan. You ordained it. And we thank you, Lord God. It wasn't even our efforts or our will, Lord God. You designed it this way, and we are grateful to you. We thank you for life today. We thank you, Lord God, that we are still here to give you honor and praise and to be a blessing to others. We pray that you'll be in the midst of our Bible study this evening. We thank you for the technology that shall work in Jesus' name. And for everyone that has gathered with us today on Facebook, YouTube, or over the conference line, we pray your favor in their homes, God, in their lives, in their finances. God, you see the needs of your people. You see those that are looking 
for new places to live, new places to work, new friends, new associates. We just pray, dear God, that you will direct them and send help from your sanctuary and strengthen them out of Zion, Lord God. Visit every domestic issue, Lord, all tension, all hallelujah, strife. We hallelujah. pray for your peace. Jehovah, shalom, hallelujah, be our peace right now, we pray. We pray for peace, God, around the world, particularly in Jamaica and the Kingston area, Lord God, St. James, God, in Clarendon, God, wherever the um, upheaval, wherever the turmoil is, wherever the violence is, Lord God, we pray that you'll sweep through, amen, and be the Prince of Peace there, Hallelujah. Lord God. We Hallelujah. pray for peace throughout the Caribbean islands, oh God, the Latin islands, oh God, South America, Lord, here in North America, Lord, Canada and United States. Jesus. Lord, we pray for peace even during the debate this evening. We pray, Lord God, that they will be civil. We pray that they will be intelligent. We pray that the Holy Ghost will be in the midst, Lord God. Reveal the things that Jesus. need to be revealed. Let truth come forth in the name of Jesus. Let every lie be revealed. Amen. We pray, dear God, that you will prevail. Lord God, remember our brothers and sisters over in Europe. God, we have family in Hallelujah. England, others, oh God, in Germany and Italy and France. We pray, dear God, for their provision and their protection. We pray for Asia, Lord. We pray for Australia, Lord God. From Hallelujah. the north to the south, Thank the you, Jesus. east, back through to the east, Lord Thank God. Jesus. Be Lord over everything. Thank you, Jesus. We give you thanks and praise right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Amen. That was, amen, Lady C, interceding. Amen. One of the first prayers. Amen. That ever moved God was a prayer of intercession. Abraham prayed and the Lord delivered his nephew. Praise the Lord. God bless you, everybody. Thank you again for, for joining us this evening. Those of you who were with us on last week, you know, we started a series, amen, called Body Parts. Amen. Or the Body Works series, Body Parts. And uh, we want to uh, continue. Last week, we spoke about the feet. Praise God. I want the feet. Amen. I hope you remember. I hope some of you, when you get ready to pray, amen, when you start to pray, pray for your own body. Anoint your feet. Some of you ladies have swollen ankles and what have you. Amen. You need to remind your body that this is what God has given you to take authority, to take, amen. God bless your sister Paulette. Amen. To take dominion. Amen. Amen. The angel in Revelation had one foot on the land. And one foot on the sea. And for those of you who can, amen. Not everybody can, but for those of you who can, go for a walk. Don't just coop up in the house. At least the weather is still okay. Get out to your house. And while you're walking, pray. Praise God. Some some Wednesday nights, maybe about two or three times now while we are praying on Wednesday evenings. Amen. I'm outdoors walking and listening and praying in and asking God to do something, amen. It, it's never too late. The enemy can still, some of you living in good areas now. I remember when I was growing up, certain places in, in my own country were, were noted for violence. But when I talked to people who had migrated many years before, they used to tell me that certain places were posh places, amen. When you heard about Vineyard Town and, and Almond Town, those were nice areas. But it just takes a, amen, a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And before you know it, it gets in, you know, turn into a negative place. So uh, right now your era may be posh and gated, mm -hmm. but if you don't pray, the enemy, the enemy will come in. So, so don't just stay in your house yes. and your, you know, your split levels and mm -hmm. your, you know, your detached and whatever your three car garage, get out there, amen, and walk around your town, walk around your block. And if everybody does that, if we start walking again, remember, the feet is for taking territories. Amen? Amen? Praise God. God bless you. So tonight, we will be looking at tonight. What's the lesson tonight? We're going to be looking at, we're coming up from the feet. We're going to be looking at the leg and the knee. Praise God. We're going to be looking at the leg and the knee. Amen. For those of you who don't know, amen, Lady C., Amen. She uh, she's one of those people responsible for your health care <laughs> in one way or the other. Everybody, indirectly, she uh, is a professor that, and she tr helped to train the nurses. And so what I've done, I've asked her to give us praise God. I'm not bragging on that. I'm just giving God thanks for her. Amen. And uh, it's good to have somebody next to me who who has the, 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 the professional physical know-how. 
Amen. And some big words to go with it. Amen. So I've asked her to give us an insight into the biological, the medical aspect, praise God, of what the leg is. Uh, I didn't ask her about the feet, but maybe if she if she's you know in in the mood she probably could lead from the feet up to the leg and up to the knee so lady see it's over to you tell us a little bit amen in the natural what the feet amen and how many bones it got how many toes <laughs> and uh you know i heard that sometimes everything you can feel goes down to the feet that kind of stuff so mm -hmm. so talk to us a little bit and then we'll go into the word tonight. Go ahead. Go ahead. Praise the Lord. How much time do I have? <laughs> All right. We'll make it short. We'll make it short. God bless you, everybody. Um, let's start with the feet. So the feet are the lowest part of your body, but note that the feet support everything above you. So all your weight is distributed down towards your feet, as small as they are, as insignificant as they seem, and for many, as ugly as they are, your feet are very important. Even the toes, and I have a fancy word for you, it's one of my favorite, phalanges. Can you say that, PH? Phalanges. So we have the toes, which are the phalanges. And some people wonder, what's the purpose of the toes? You need your toes for balance. You need your toes for gripping. That's why they're there. And I just want to stick this in. Don't let anybody tell you that a part of your body is insignificant or it's a leftover evolutionary part. God designed it. God put it there and it does have a purpose. So your feet bear your weight. They also help you to maintain the upright position and of course lead you where you need to go. I got a question for you. Yes. So you know like how they say you got, uh, uh, what do you got, ten fin or eight fingers and two thumbs? Right. So what, what's the great toe call? Is the... It's called the hallux. Hallux. H-A-L-L-U-S. So you got eight toes and two what? Halixes. Alexis. <laughs> yes. And when that big toe bone um, experiences too much friction, when your shoes are too tight, wear your size, then <laughs> the uh, there's a part of a joint wear your there. Size. Yes. There's a Come on, Stitchy. <laughs> <laughs> there's a joint structure there called a bursa and it can um, become inflamed and lead to bursitis. And of course, improperly fitting shoes, so you gotta take care of your feet. Um, improperly fitting shoes can cause the bones to deviate and individuals can develop what's called hammer toes. And then, you, you know, you know, toes. Anyways, can we move up to yeah, the move, feet? Yeah, move okay. it up, move it up. Should we say the ankles? Okay, go ahead, we didn't talk about that, but can, yeah, but part we'll of the, the feet, it's part of okay. the feet, go ahead. So the ankles are made up of eight, seven bones, seven bones. Your heel bone is called the calcaneus. That's the one that uh, the large tendon called your Achilles tendon attaches to. You may have heard the expression from Greek mythology that individuals have a weak spot, it's the Achilles heel. So if that tendon is damaged, you will not be able to um, extend your foot. You remember what that's called, Pastor? When you, you your pike, your pike, your, like, yes, like the called, ballet, you know. Yes, when you pike your toes, it's called yeah. plantar flexion. <laughs> But he loves the other way. Listen, <laughs> if you got if you got somebody who's a nursing student or, or studying nursing, you need to send this link to them right now. Tell them we are over here speaking in tongues. <laughs> What's it called? Uh, your your favorite when you flex up at the ankle. In the, when you point your toes up. You it's this a way. curve. It's a, this way. When you point your toes up. I don't know. Starts with a D. Dorsiflexion. Dorsiflex. That's dorsiflexion. When you when you stick your heel down and your toes come up. It's dorsiflex. Dorsiflex. Oh, yes. yes. And when you pike it, it's called a what? Plantar flexion. Plantar flexion. Plantar flexion. They couldn't just say pike, you know, it had to be plantar. See these doctors. Go, go ahead, Lacey. Right. Go ahead. So the ankle bones move against each other, mm -hmm. and they also form a joint with the bones of the arch of your foot, which is important, again, for distributing weight and balance. So we didn't talk about flat footed versus um, claw footed, but those are abnormalities in the arch of the foot. And in the ankle, we have, um, ankle joint is actually formed by those bones as well as the two bones of your leg. So now this is for my Caribbean friends and don't think that I'm picking on you. Everything below your waist is not your foot. Okay, so we start with the thigh. <laughs> we start with the thigh is from your, your <laughs> trunk to the knee, that's the thigh. And then from the knee to the ankle is properly the leg. And then we have the ankle and beyond the ankle is the foot. So you can't, me foot, me foot, me foot, and be grabbing your well, thigh. We, we call the thigh the leg. 
Yeah, or whichever, but it's so, anatomically. So, so from your hip down between, between your hip and your knee. Is, it's the thigh region or the femoral. I thought, I thought that was the leg. That is not the leg. <laughs> right? Think of think of a chicken too, right? The thigh is distinct from the chicken leg. Anyways, just thought I'd throw that out there. Okay. Um, so the leg proper is made up of two bones, the tibia and the fibula. All right. If you tell a lie, it's a fib. So that's the smaller uh, back bone that's towards the back. That's how I remember it. And these two bones, again, work together to distribute weight and to form the joint with the ankle. And then we have the knee. And the knee is the most complex joint in your body. The knee is formed by the large thigh bone called the femur, which forms a joint with the large leg bone called the tibia. And you've heard of the kneecap. That's that um, flat bone that covers that joint called the patella, patella. Now, the knee is complex in terms of its structures, but listen to this. The knee is only designed to bend in one direction, right? It forms a hinge joint. So you extend your leg when you kick out and you bend it back when you flex it. And that's all it's designed for. And God has put several ligaments and other structures in place to limit your knee to do one thing. Your knee must bend. Pastor, you can take that in. All right, all right. All right. That, I think we have enough there. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. All right. So what have I learned tonight? I've learned about the dorsiflex when you push your heels down and your toes come up. Mm -hmm. Or if you pike it out the other way, it's called a plantar, plantar flexion. flexion. Mighty God of Daniel. Amen. And then you got toes. Amen. Eight toes and two alexis. Halexes. Halexes. <laughs> I'm coming. I'm coming there. And they're there for gripping. Praise God. And then they're, 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 balance, they're yes. and so you should have you shouldn't have flat foot. Flat nope, foot. Shouldn't have flat your, feet. Your your feet should have a, a slight hollow between the front and the back. Arch of the foot. That, it's called the arch of the foot. Amen. All right. Okay. And we learned about the leg. Amen. The leg different from the thigh. So up here is not your leg. I'm touching my leg. He's not touching hurt. his thigh saying leg, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's been years I've been saying this. It's going to take a oh, while. We're going to help you. All right. You. Okay. So tonight we are going to go into the word of the Lord. Now, why do we need to know this? Mm. Why do we need to know this? Uh, uh, let's run just to be, these are like, uh, you know, uh, what should I say? Um, standard scriptures for this series. Okay. So if you go to Ezekiel, Ezekiel 37 and verse 11, you remember the story in Ezekiel 37? Oh, yes. Yeah. When there was this valley full of bones, the, the bones are there because the, there was a slaughter. The army was, was slaughtered in the valley and they didn't have time for burial. So they stayed there until they decomposed until, until they can you imagine in that valley, there was this stench and then all of the, 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 uh, the compositions and, and until there was no nothing left for, for maggots, the, the bones were dry, mm. but God was able, amen, to restore from the bones an entire army. What a mighty God we serve. Verse 11 says, then he said unto me, son of man, these are the, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say our bones are dried and our hope is lost mm -hmm. and we are cut off for our parts. So your body parts are important to God. There's a word for every area of your body. Amen. For your eyes. Amen. Uh, the psalmist said, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills for your hands. Oh, clap your hands, all ye people, for your heart. You know, there is a word. Ladies, we're going to talk about the, in, the, inner, in the inner parts uh, one of these nights. But this is good. I've had a lot of good feedback from last week. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse number 24 says, For our comely parts mm -hmm. have no need, uh, but God had tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to the parts which lacked. So, you know, the world that your body is like the, the body is a, is a temple of God. And, and we are, we are like a mini church, our body. And so just like how the world, the world celebrates, um, the famous, the world celebrates the rich, the world celebrates, you know, the, 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 the attractive, Beautiful. you know, um, the popular, but when you, when you look into the word of God, God goes for the lost, 
for the least yes. and for and for the and for the last. <laughs> Amen. God goes for the last, uh, lost, and the least. Right. And so and so we are here looking at what 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 does God have to do or have, what does the word have to say about different parts of your body. Your body is the temple of God. What purpose do, do they serve spiritually? All right. And so tonight we are going to talk about the leg. Amen. So let's talk about the leg. One more scripture. Amen. For you. Romans chapter 12 verse number 5 says, So we being many are one body in Christ and everyone members one of another. So our spiritual fitness is dependent on our understanding of the function of each member of our body. Amen. If you go to the gym, we got a good friend, Rowan, Rowan Miller. We got other folks, you know. Amen. Who, who work out? Uh, Elder Anthony, Anthony, what's his name? From Reval, uh, Anthony Taylor. Oh. God bless you, Anthony. Oh, Shout out to you, man. You know those guys are buff, man. They, you know, they work out. You know, my my exercise is, is this. You know, I you know I live, do a lot of biceps training with my <laughs> my food. <laughs> Praise God. But they 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 work out, and so if you don't if you don't know what you're doing, you can hurt yourself. Mm -hmm. If you don't know how to lift. Amen. You can hurt yourself. If you don't know when to rest and how to breathe while you're working out, they say you can hurt yourself. So, you know, when you go to the gym, you don't just jump on the treadmill and, and you know, do all the stuff you see everybody else doing. <laughs> there are techniques to it. Tell them, Mother and, Daily, come on, show us how to do it. Amen. Yeah. So, yeah, a lot of people, they exercise as well. So, if you don't know what you're doing, you can hurt yourself. So, we are going to be talking about amen different parts of the body so as you heard a lady see talk about the feet and so on and so forth so we're going to go tonight and we're going to look at the legs amen so the first thing we're going to look at tonight are the legs so what are the legs what's the purpose of the legs praise god many of you have probably heard terms um like you know a little idioms here and there people say not having a leg to stand on what does that mean you have no your, your argument has no authenticity yeah you know you you're out you're out to left field mm -hmm. praise god <laughs> yeah, there's no government. reasonable or logical uh basis for the opinion or the argument you don't have a leg to stand on you know mm -hmm. I, I i have a friend um you know i'm gonna say this in the jamaican way i have a friend who was uh caught speeding and by the time the police flagged him down he drove way past the police he had, and the police stood there and look he had to reverse to where the police officer was standing and as soon as he got to where the police officer was standing, the police officer said to him, you can't tell me nothing. <laughs> you know, in other words, you don't have a leg to stand on. You know, you, I don't care what your argument is. You know, you don't have a leg to stand on. So uh, what else have you heard about the leg? When, when we say to pull one's leg, what do we mean? To deceive them or to, no, to make, yes, to deceive them or joke with them. You're, you're mocking me. Yeah, to tease, to mm -hmm. make fun of, you know, mm -hmm. to pull one's leg. And and lastly, when somebody say you're on the last leg, I'm on the last leg. Last chance. You better smarten up. <laughs> you're worn out. Mm. You're exhausted. Mm. You know this is the final inning or so on. The okay, last leg. One, okay, yeah, last beautiful. Leg. All right. So the leg. When we talk about the leg in the scripture, we are talking about the support system. Right. I mean, ladies, he alluded to the fact that as much as some of us have bow leg and skinny leg and hairy leg and whatever, you know, those security ladies at the airport, you know, the, you know, the little bit of leg and the calf muscles come out here and, you know, um, it's a support system. And, 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 and that's a very good point you made because sometimes we don't appreciate the people who are not seen often. And uh, to, to, to lift somebody up, you got to be stronger than them. All right. You know, you got to be stronger than them. So if you are in an area where you are offering support, amen, to the body of Christ, you're the ones behind the scenes, you're the one in the trousers, you're the one under the table, nobody sees you, you know, you got these little prickly hairs or scars or whatever. You know, if you're in, spiritually speaking, if you're in that position where you are a good support system, you're your prayer person or so on behind the scenes, you're doing a great job. You're doing a great job. God bless you. Amen. So the feet represent the support system. First scripture tonight, Psalm 140, Psalm 147 and verse 10. What does it say? He delighteth not in the strength of the horse. Uh -huh. He taketh not pleasure in the legs of a man. All right. So God is not, you know, the Bible is trying to extol God's own power. 
But as you can see in the scripture there, the, the strength of a man is in his legs. Amen. Mm. So God does not delight, scripture says, amen, in the strength of horses, nor take it pleasure in the legs of a man. So the legs are the support system can we get another scripture mm -hmm. what about songs of solomon amen we don't say a lot about songs of solomon but let's let's see if we can borrow a scripture tonight songs of solomon chapter number five and uh let's look at uh verse number 15. his legs are as pillars of marble set upon sockets of fine gold his countenance is as lebanon excellent as the cedars all right his legs are a pillar of marble Amen. You go into those fine uh, architectural buildings, especially in if you travel to Rome and so on. But there are some places here that if you go to certain places in Washington, D.C., you know, you see these fantastic pillars. Amen. They, they, they are support systems. I don't know how many of you watch HGTV and some of those rental shows, uh, but um, sometimes they want to, you know, uh, remove a wall open but, and open up the space, you know. But but they found out that those are load bearing walls. Oh, Praise it. God! Yeah. They have to. If you're gonna move those walls, you gotta put a steel beam or something, amen, across to hold the roof up. But if you move the wall without replacing the support system, then it's gonna come down on you. And so you are in a good spot. Some of you, the enemy can't move you because you are a support system. You are a pillar. Praise God! The Bible says there in Sons of Solomon chapter five. And verse number 15, his legs are as pillars of marble. Amen. Set upon sockets of fine gold. You know, gold represents divinity, right? His countenance is as Lebanon, excellent as the cedars. And cedar is one of those uh, uh, trees mm -hmm. where the, the, the wood is, is almost indestructible. It doesn't decay. Praise God. Very expensive. Praise God. Like redwood. If you're gonna make a, a, a raised bed, you gotta make sure either you get pressure treated or cedar. Those of you don't like pressure treated, praise God. If you're gonna get something that will last for a while, you gotta get cedar. And in some parts of the country and other places around the world, it's very expensive. Amen. Two by fours, two by eight, two by ten, whatever. It's very expensive. So, amen. Your legs represent support system. I don't know if you've ever heard anybody say when you're lifting heavy load, what do you do? You don't, if you don't lift properly, you're going to hurt your lower back. Mm -hmm. Amen. How many of you got back pains right now? We're going to pray for you and believe God for healing in the name of Jesus. Some of you got up and forgot that the drawer, the, the desk drawer was open and you hurt yourself. Praise God. Or you strain yourself. Amen. Working hard, swinging that pickaxe or whatever you do, hurt yourself. But remember, amen, God wants you healed and so do I. But your legs are what you lift with. Your hands hold the stuff, but you lift with your legs. They are support system. Let's go again to first first Samuel chapter seventeen. You know first Samuel chapter seventeen, don't you? It's that chapter about David and Goliath. And so we have a scripture here about Goliath. Well, what does it say? Verse number six. First Samuel seventeen and verse number six. What does it say? And he had greaves of brass upon his leg. Yes. And a target of brass between his shoulders. Yeah, talking about Goliath. Goliath had stuff, shin guards. We call them, if you're playing soccer or football in certain countries, it, it's, it's, it's a shin guard. Amen. A lot of these football players got hurt because they, they weren't wearing shin guards and somebody clipped them. Mm. Amen. It's a very delicate area, that bone at the front. No muscle no protecting muscle, it. No there. muscle protecting it. Mm. Amen. It's just so, so bone. Praise <laughs> God. <laughs> Little bit of muscle. Little bit much. of muscle. Yeah. Praise God. So, so Goliath, even though he was big and heavy, he made sure he protected. All right. Lord, help us here. He protected his support system are you hearing me pastors mm -hmm. praise god sometimes right. you got some members in your church mm -hmm. they're not the preachers amen they're not the ones up front they don't sit on the pulpit but they are your support system they are the ones praying praise god you got to make sure yeah. you protect them mm -hmm. and don't let nobody hurt them amen you got prayer people in your church I, and by the way i want to take a moment can i just take a moment please do and let me say to you i i had a great birthday yesterday i was off work I spent a lot of time out back, amen, fixing up the garden. And I want to thank God for those of you. Reach that, reach that box for me, please, ladies. See oh, okay. <laughs> Praise God. I want to thank God for those of you, amen, who took the time to wish Pastor Christy a happy birthday, sent your text. 
Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. I, oh, glory. Lord, have mercy. Oh, the, glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. They, whoo, glory to God. Did you see that? Seven mangoes. Praise God. Hallelujah. The fruit of the Spirit. <laughs> Woo! Glory to God. Amen. You got you guys blessed me on yesterday. I'm telling, listen, I'm listen, this is a hint. You guys are taking me around the world. Praise God. Thank you so much. Listen, I, I got let's go back to the word. Amen. I'm getting carried away. But I want to thank you. Now listen. If you couldn't send me anything, somebody made me a nice meal too. Praise God. Thank God. Amen. Baby breakfast and all that. But if you didn't give me anything, praise God, there's always another opportunity. But <laughs> if you didn't give me anything, if you all you could do is pray, or I tell you what, uh, that, that means a lot to me. Praise God. You are in my support system because it's Hallelujah. it's tough doing what I do. Mm -hmm. Amen. It's tough doing that. I, I, I got a nine to five. I got a family. Praise God. And I often pray. So Lord, make me a better person. Make me a better partner. Make me a better parent. And make me a better pastor. Praise God. I want to develop in those areas. And so when you pray for me, you're helping me. You're my support system. Amen. You're Thank my God. prayer warriors. Thank Amen. You. Amen. You. When I preach and you show up, I feel good about it. Praise God. It's encouraging. If you send me a text every now and then, praise God. I'm happy for you. God bless you because every bit of encouragement works. I want to thank God for all of you. I won't call names, but God is good all the time. All right. So your feet are your support system. So as much as Goliath had upper body strength and muscles and a loud voice and he was strong, he made sure that something was in place to protect his his little tiny legs, amen. He wants to make sure that his feet were protected, his, his legs were protected. So again, 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse number 6 says, And he had greaves of brass, praise God, shin, shin guards, greaves of brass upon his legs and a target of brass between his shoulders. He got shoulder pads. Maybe that's where they got the, 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 the football. Maybe that's where they got the idea. Shoulder pads and shin guards. All right. So your legs are your support system. Somebody write in the comments, support system. Amen. Support system. Secondly, your legs speak of balance. Yes. Praise God. Your legs speak of balance. Now, many of you don't realize this, but God is a God of balance. Amen. God is not one track. God is a God of balance. He wants you to be spiritual and he wants you to be physically fit as well. Beloved, he, what is that? John, John 3, verse 2. Yeah. Amen. 3rd John. 3rd John. Go, go with me to 3rd John. Amen. Just before Revelation, you got 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John. 3rd John, verse 2. Amen. What does it say? 3rd John 2. Beloved, I wish above all things uh -huh. that thou mayest prosper and be in hell. Uh -huh. Even as thy soul prospers. So, so God, I know it's well with your soul, and you want to go to heaven and rest. By the way, we don't we don't sing that song because you know if you want to go to heaven and rest, I mean, you get sick, don't don't ask for prayer, just go on, <laughs> praise God. But but when 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 but God doesn't want you just to be you know, saved and on your way. He wants you to be healthy, Amen, beloved. That's why there is gift of healing. As a matter of fact, he he died for your health as well. He was wounded. Mm -hmm. Come on now. Where, where, where am I at? Uh, 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 Isaiah 53, verse 5. Isaiah 53, verse 5 says, But he was wounded for our transgression. Yeah. Praise God. Bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are, we are healed. Mm -hmm. God wants you healed. Amen. Somebody need to put that in caps. Write it down. God wants you healed. He wants you healed. Amen. Not just saved, but healed. That's why he that's why he raised the dead and, and opened. Lord, I feel it's something moving here. That's why he raised the dead and opened the eyes of the blind. Let me tell you that the body's gonna go back to the dust of the ground, but but it doesn't have to be that quickly. 
Praise God. Some of you are just contented that you're saved, and that's good. Amen. That's the first thing you need to iron down. What shall a man give in exchange for his soul? But God wants you healed. He wants you to do what you need to do to keep yourself healthy, to have good habits. Amen. Are you listening to me? Not just the sweets, too much pop and all this sugar and donuts and mangoes. <laughs> mangoes are fruit. <laughs> Praise God. Good for you. The fibers and the sucrose. Amen. Amen. I don't know what fruit the Bible is talking about when he said, Come taste and see that the Lord is good. Praise God. Anyhow, I'm just joking there. But listen, you need to exercise, eat right, take Geritol and Safrin commercial or whatever. Amen. One a day, vitamin this, vitamin that. Praise God. Whatever you need to do, keep yourself fit. Go for a walk, man. You don't have to be like Speedy Gonzalez and, 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 and run like everybody else. Take your time, do your pace, but make sure you do something to keep yourself going, keep yourself healthy. Praise God. That's your your body is your support system. You can praise God like you wanna if come you're on, sick. Come, come on, on now, Amen. You can you can run the eyes like you wanna if you're sick. As a, as a matter of fact, when you're sick, you're concerned about your health and and distracted. Lord, you're taking all these pills and. And you don't know what's in it. Lord have mercy. Come on, man. Come on. Eat, eat, eat something that is not processed, but but but, but is produced. <laughs> Amen. You didn't you didn't eat something that's produced and and put that which is processed on the side. Amen. Are you hearing me? Come on. Get back to your some things we don't like it because it don't taste good. It doesn't have to taste good to be good for you. Praise God. Get back to your to your sulfur bitters and your Sinkums. your your uh, your aloe vera, whatever it is that you need. Some greens, some colonel, some spinach. Praise God to build you up and to make you well. I want to. I want a church full of healthy folks. Are you hearing me, somebody? All right. Let's get to the word. So so Proverbs Proverbs chapter twenty six, Proverbs twenty six and verse number seven. Oh Lord, I still hear you. I still hear. Some of you need to get yourself a juicer. A blender and put some kale and some stuff and and blend it up, man. And you know, bring yourself back, amen. Put a little pineapple juice in there to give it a little taste, you know. And but but work on yourself, work on yourself, amen. Work on yourself. Leave leave the hospitals to those who can't do any better. But work on yourself, Lord. I don't know where I'm going with that, but that's for somebody out there. In the name of Jesus, mm -hmm. you're too young to be that big. Come on, somebody. Amen. You know, put your health back together. Jesus healed a man and said, Go thy way and sin no more, no. lest a worse thing come upon thee. Praise God. God will heal you, but staying healthy is your responsibility. Are you hearing me? I'm going to say it again. God will heal you, but staying healthy is your responsibility. Proverbs 26, verse number 7. The legs of the lame are not equal. Have you ever seen somebody, amen, where one leg is is, is shorter than the other? Mm -hmm. Praise God. The legs, amen, of the lame is not equal. So is a parable in the mouth of fools. Praise God. So so when, when a fool try to say, uh, give a parable, it don't make sense. It don't add up. Mm -hmm. Amen. It, it's it's wonky. Mm -hmm. So so the, the legs of the lame are not equal. So when you know how to pray, when you're praying for somebody, you see walk in front of you, you don't know, say, Lord, touch them and, and whatever. You can say, Lord, balance the legs. Amen. Amen. Make the legs equal, like an equal sign. Praise God. Whatever whatever needs to be rectified, God can do it. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And if there's anybody listening to me right now, in the name of Jesus, and there is something wrong with your leg, I'm speaking a word of healing oh, yeah. and deliverance over oh. you right now in the name of Jesus. You need those legs to, 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 to do what God has called you to do. All right, my time is going. Let me run on. Let me run on. So the legs are going to step up two tonight. So the legs are what? Number one, your support system, support system and your legs are also what? Equality, Equality and, balance. and balance. Equality and Balance, Lord, those of you in the States, you need a leg to stand on. <laughs> if you're a certain shade, certain color, you need a leg to stand on because, yeah, legs, because something not balanced, amen, mm. over there in the divided States of America. Something not balanced over there. It's, 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 it's lopsided. Mm. 
It's unequal. Amen. It's the, it depends on who you are. I don't know if you remember, amen, when I was younger, uh, Lady C, uh, you go down downtown Kingston, and, uh, you know, when you walk into certain stores, uh, they have some people who meet you at the door and try to help you, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, it depends on it, the price. The price fluctuates. <laughs> the price fluctuates depend on how you look and how you sound. Yeah. You know, so if you sound like you can pay more, they, they charge you more. Amen, amen, amen. All right, anyhow. So wherever there is an, an, an inequity, praise God. The God doesn't like that. Your legs stand for equity and balance amen praise god we're gonna go on tonight let's go to the knees mm -hmm. what did what did you say about the knees the knee is the most complex joint in the body uh-huh but it is also the one that only allows for movement in one direction open and close like a hinge flex and expand god wants you to do one particular thing with your knee so so why is the knee the most complex part of the body it has um the most structures within the joint so a lot of ligaments a lot of accessory structures with the joint you may have heard of football players or others that have had torn ligaments in the knee i was going to yes. ask about that because we know a few a few elder saints who have had to have operations on their knee and oh. knee replacement knee replacement yeah. so so the knee what does the knee look like it's a hot mess and there's ligaments going all kind of ways but also it's because it's a weight bearing joint that's why a lot of older people need it so is it a continuous bone or is just where two bones meet all joints are where two or more bones meet so it's where your thigh bone up here meets your shin bone that's the knee joint proper so where your where your thigh bone meets your your thigh bone is from the coming down from your from your i have to measure my yeah. from your waist down um, there's, that's your thigh bone. Yes. And then your shin bone is coming up from your ankles. So where both of them meet, that's your knee. That's your knee. And and so between the two bones, because I'm sure that's going to hurt. But, but what's, what's you, have, the... you have accessory structures like menisci and bursa and fatty pads and a lot of ligaments to hold it together and make it fit properly and limit the range of motion to only opening and closing. So, so when somebody has a knee replacement, what, what's really happening? What are they replacing? They're replacing the ends of the bones, probably, because they've been worn out with all this wear and tear. Because every time you step on your feet, that force is being transmitted through your knees down to your feet. So again, a lot of weight bearing on the knees. And over time, especially in individuals that are either physically active or are overweight, your knees are bearing a lot of that weight. Oh, what a God. All right. So, so, so the knees, amen, is that, it's that intersection between the, the thigh bone, the femur, the femur, glory to God, amen, and the shin bone, the tibia, the tibia, the femur and the tibia. Amen. Good job. Femur and the tibia. I might make too much fun here today. <laughs> Praise God. All right. So what are the knees? The knees in the scripture, the knees are used to represent worship and submission. Amen. Write this down, please. The knees, the legs are support and, and balance. The knees, <coughs> excuse me, means worship and submission. Yes, are you up there? Yes. Worship yes. and submission. Let's hear what the word says. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 45, 23. What do you say? 23? Yes. I have sworn by myself, the word has gone out of my mouth in righteousness and shall not return. That unto me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall swear. Amen. I have sworn by myself. God talking. The word is gone out of my mouth. See, see, I, we could preach on this tonight, but we're just going to say it in passing. God, God couldn't find, in the book of Hebrews, he, God was referring to Oh, the writer was referring to this scripture here in Isaiah. So in Hebrews chapter uh, chapter 10, I believe, when, when God could not find anything else to swear by, amen, he had to swear by himself. We, have, we swear by everything else, you know, and if this don't happen, may this happen. But God, in Hebrews chapter 6, sorry, Hebrews chapter 6 and verse number 13, when, for when God uh, made promise to Abraham because he could swear by no greater, he swore by himself so god says i have sworn by myself mm -hmm. the word is gone out of my mouth that's right isaiah 45 23 
it, the word has gone out of my mouth in righteousness and shall not return that unto me. And this is why we say Jesus is God. Amen. Because oh. because in the old in the New Testament it said God has given the name that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow. But in the Old Testament, God is saying, I, I have sworn. Don't get me excited. Amen. Now, I have Woo. sworn that unto me every knee shall bow Woo. and every tongue shall swear. In the New Testament they say confess. Amen. Every tongue shall swear. Praise the Lord. Let's go to the New Testament. Romans. Romans. So watch that. Every knee that unto me, see, unto me every knee shall bow. Now I know in some some in some cultures, you know, you you bow that you bow down to the 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 queen or the king, and you know that's different. You know, you're just showing respect. It, there's nothing wrong with that. In the Bible, a lot of people do that. They show obeisance and so forth, but they don't bow down in terms of worship. There's a difference between you just respecting. And, and so on. Nothing wrong with that. If that's your culture, if you have a problem with it, don't do it. Uh, but 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 there's a difference with that. Just showing respect and and worship. So so when you bow down to God, you're worshiping Him. Amen. Let's go to Romans chapter 14 and verse number 11. For it is written, As I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. Amen. For it is written, As I live, I think I have email those to you. Oh. Every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall confess to God. Amen. Every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall confess to God. Praise the Lord Jesus. Also, uh, we are in the New Testament still. Let's go to, to uh, uh, Ephesians 3 verse 14. Let's read it forward. All right. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse number 14. Praise God. Ephesians 3 and verse number 14. Are you there? Praise God. I'm going to read for you. For this cause. Paul is talking near to the Ephesian church. He says, For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. Are you, are you there? Praise God. He's bowing down. Praise God. Amen. In, in his knees. So when you bow down, you are you're worshiping there. He bowed unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And they, I don't know the next verse. Um, but we you know of, of whom the whole family, praise God, the whole family in heaven and earth is named after that name. So he bowed down to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. Philippians chapter 2. Yes, sir. Philippians chapter 2 and verse number 10. One of my favorites. All that. right, go ahead and you read that. Then. Okay, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. So, so when you when you bow the knee, amen. It's a sign of worship. It's a sign of submission. Praise the Lord. I know. I know. You know when you're talking to somebody, you know, like I'm talking to you. You know, I'm seated upright. Um, I could be talking to you while I'm jogging or while I'm driving. Uh, and so it's the same thing in prayer. You can you can have different postures, and we're mm -hmm. going to talk about that. But it's good sometimes to bow down and worship God. Amen. Make sure you go to a church. <laughs> Amen. Maybe it's a little bit of carpet. Or walk with your own kneeling cushion, bed, yes. your own cushion. <laughs> Amen. When you're out in the garden and you're trying to, you know, reach over into your garden bed, you know, you sometimes have to, you know, go on your knees and so on. So, so kneeling down is an act of worship. It's an act of submission. It is also a posture of prayer so write this down number two when you bow down number one is a worship and submission and number two it is a prayer posture mm -hmm. praise god it's in the different there are different postures in prayer you can lay down on your face you know you know you can you can stand up like we do in church you can join hands you can so on and so forth but it's good sometimes especially when you're praying by yourself to go down on your knees. I bowed on my knees and cried holy. Anybody know that song? Amen. Holy to the Lamb of God. Praise God. Amen. So let's go to St. Luke. St. Luke chapter number 22. Amen. Let's go to St. Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22. 
and verse number 41. Amen. Luke chapter 22. Amen. Verse number 41. Hallelujah. Praise God. Luke 22, verse 41. Amen. What does it say? And when he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast, and kneeled down and prayed, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And as he was withdrawn from them, a stone cast. Yeah. And this is talking about who? Jesus. 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 Remember, Jesus is, is our example. A, a scripture just dropped in my spirit. I'm trying to find it. Amen. I don't want to call it out loud until I got it. Amen. I think it's Acts chapter 20. Amen. So here we have in St. Luke chapter 22. And verse number 41, the Bible says that when he was withdrawn from them about a stone cast, as far as you can cast a stone, amen, he kneeled down and prayed. Praise God. In Acts, the book of Acts chapter 20, uh, Paul, having met with the, the brethren at, at, of the church in Ephesus for the last time, praise God, was, was talking to them about their calling. And uh, they were on the beach. And. Uh, amen. While they were on the beach. They kneeled down and they prayed. I believe. Laid hands on them. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So let's go to the book of uh, Acts. Acts I'm going to read. This is a long one. This is a long one. So let me, let me get into this for you. Praise God. It's a prayer posture. So when you get up, make sure you have somewhere in your house, you know, where you can kneel down and pray. Mm -hmm. Amen. Make sure you have somewhere you can kneel on and pray. Amen. Kneel down, kneel, bow down and, and you know, you put your, those of you who have prayer cloth, you know, you can put over your head or a blanket or something or cover your feet or whatever you need to do, but find it somewhere. Amen. A place in the basement, a place in the back. Get up early before everybody else. Praise God, so you can pray to the Lord. Amen. Here we go. Acts chapter number 20. Amen. My time is going. Acts number 20. And we're going to go to verse number 28. Praise the Lord Jesus. Acts number 20. Amen. Verse number 28. Paul was talking to the church. This, the, 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 the church in Ephesus was the, was the mega church. Praise God. Back then, Paul was the pastor of that church one time. Then, then he handed it over. Amen. To, to Timothy. All of the rock stars in the New Testament, amen, passed through that church. Mm. Amen. There was a time when, when the apostles went there to preach. Uh, we got 12 men who received the Holy Ghost since they believed. Praise God. Right there in Ephesus, Apollos preached there. It was a big church. Nice church. <laughs> Praise God. And so Paul went there for the last time. Verse number 28, he said, Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves. Now, while I'm at it, let me just say this. Everywhere in the scripture... When you see the words, take heed, it always points to the personal reflexive pronoun. Take heed to yourself. Praise God. You know what a reflexive pronoun is? I'm teaching. Might as well. Teach me, Pastor. So a reflexive pronoun usually follows a personal pronoun. So in the same sentence. So if you have already referred to yourself, like I would say, me. I'm, this is my personal pronoun. So I've already said me. If I'm going to refer to myself again in the same sentence... I can't say me, me. I say me, myself. Okay? Or you, yourself. All right. So once I've already used the personal pronoun, if I'm going to keep referring to the subject, and then I have to use a reflexive. All right. So Paul says, take heed to yourself. Take heed. You take heed. But to who? To yourself. Amen. The rest of man will say, take heed to you and you. Or I and I. But, but in proper English, not proper English, the, the way we say, you know, there's no proper language. The way you talk is the way you talk. People around you understand what you're saying. All right. But, but take heed to yourselves, amen, and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost had made you overseer to feed the church of God, which he had purchased, which is own blood. So, so leaders and elders, you have a responsibility, amen, to feed, amen, the flock that God has purchased, that Jesus has purchased, which is own blood. For I know this, Paul is saying, that after my departing shall grievous wolves 
enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise speaking oh mm. perverse things to draw away disciples after them. Therefore, watch and remember that for the space of three years, I cease not to warn everyone night and day with tears. And now, brethren, I commend you to God oh and to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them Thank which you. are sanctified. I have coveted no man's silver or gold or pyro. Yea, ye, here we go again, ye yourselves, yourselves. Good. know that with these hands, amen, have ministered unto my necessities and to them that were with me. So Paul said, I work. I got a job. I, I do my job. Come on now. Amen. Paul says, I got a job. I'm a tent builder. Praise God. Peter was a fisherman. Jesus grew up in the house of a carpenter. I'm sure he built something. Praise God. Some pastors have double duty. They got to work. Praise God. And so Paul says, while I was with y'all for three years, I worked. Praise God. I worked and, and provided for the, my own necessities mm -hmm. and those that were with me. I'm trying to get somewhere. Verse 35. I have shown you all things. How that so laboring. You ought to support the weak. Here we go. Support system. You ought to support the weak. Amen. And to remember the words. Of the Lord Jesus. How he said. Oh. It is more blessed to give. Than to receive. Now, now here we go. Here we go. Verse number 36. And when he had thus spoken, what did he do? He knelt down and prayed with them all. And they all wept much and fell on Paul's neck and kissed him, sorrowing most of all for the word which he spake, that they should see his face no more. Mm -hmm. And they accompanied him unto the ship. So they were sorrowful that he was saying, you know what, this is the last time mm -hmm. you're all going to see me. But what did they do? I, I know it's a long passage, but what did they do? They knelt down, amen, on the beach there, and they prayed. So your knees, God gave you knees, Lord have Come mercy. On. That's the purpose of the knees. <laughs> God gave you knees to bow down and pray to him. That's what you, your knees are there, amen, whatever color they are. Some of us have black Ooh, knees. Ba ba back in the day before... Before we had all these fancy gadgets in the home, before you had vacuum cleaners mm -hmm. and, and and robots going back and forth and and carpets all around, praise God. We used to have to come on now, somebody, come on, don't be ashamed. Uh -oh. You you had your brush and your Red your polish. floor polish, you your Rexo, I think it was Rexo brand, and your coconut brush, and you know your Saturday was spent cleaning the house. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. But your knees, God gave you spiritual knees. God gave you knees. Sadly, a lot of people not praising God. A lot of people not bowing down to him. They bow down to everybody else. Amen. They're worshiping other things. But your knees, hallelujah, were made so you could bow down before God. I just got hallelujah. this in my spirit. When, they, when, they, when the Philistine had taken the ark of God and, and put it in the house of Dagon. Dagon was... Was their, that was their abomination, their idol. One morning they got up, Dagon was on his face before the ark, with his two hands cut off. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. When you get in the presence of God, you bow down, you worship. Some, some churches, when you go in, people kneel down at their seat and pray. That's a good practice. I know, I know it sounds like it's tradition and not everybody does that. Come on, pastors. You know, it's good. Some pastors, are uh, they walk in, you know, they have a grand entrance and they go up front and they kneel down and pray. Whatever you do, praise God, do it. It may look like it's tradition and, and all that kind of stuff, but it's a good sign. It's a good sign to show somebody that you, you reverence God. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Bow down before him. Pray. Amen. Get on your knees. All right. So let's recap tonight. Praise God. So your knees, physically speaking, is the intersection between your thigh, your femur, femur and your shin bone, which is your tibia. Yeah. So your femur and your tibia. And the patella. And the, amen. Your, your femur, 
<laughs> femur. Your femur and tibia. your tibia. And patella. And your patella the and your kneecap. Mm -hmm. So your, your femur and your fibia meet together and they are they are locked in by your patella. Okay. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. That's your knee. Praise God. Amen. So your, this is your thigh up here. Not your leg. Right here from your waist down to your knee is your thigh. And going further from between your ankle and your knee is your shin bone. Amen. Your leg. Praise God. And uh, your leg doesn't have uh, any fat over it. It's a very thin layer of muscles. So you have to protect it. First, first Samuel 17 verse 6. Goliath, as big and strong as he was, he had uh, 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 greaves of brass. Amen. Shin guards, if you please, protecting his, his, his leg. And why is that? Because the legs represent your support system it's your it's your support system your legs for you to have good mobility your legs must be even, even balanced, balanced. Yes. amen what did we say proverbs proverbs chapter 26 verse 7 says that the legs of the lame are not equal and so it's like a parable in the mouth of fools all right so yeah i hope you get to these scriptures you're giving you memorize them look them over amen so how about the knees your knees are for worship and submission for this cause ephesians 3 15 mm. i bought verse 14 rather i bow my knees to the god and father of our lord jesus christ of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named mm. praise god <laughs> philippians 2 verse 10 that at the name of jesus Thank you. glory to god hallelujah every knee shall bow amen and every tongue confess that jesus christ is lord listen god bless you beloved i'm certainly not ignorant of the fact that, I mean, especially when we are online, you could scroll away, you could go somewhere else, but thank God that you stuck by us tonight. Stick by us tonight, praise God, and, and the word of the Lord came forth. Let me thank God for you. Amen. We thank God for everybody in your household. Listen, if you if you love this ministry, we want you to continue to support this ministry. Amen. Not just in your prayers. And we are grateful for your prayers. Amen. That's the number one thing. But we would like for you to support us. Amen. By your presence. Amen. When you when you log on, when you share, when you when you comment, it tells us that that you're out there. We can't see you. You can see us. Let us know you're Amen. there. Yes. Let us know you're there. Mm -hmm. So not only in your prayers, not only by your presence, but also out of your pocket. Amen. We, the Bible said money answered all things. Prayer is a question. Money is the answer. And so there are certain things we can't do without finances. As much as it's a sore point for some people, uh, the Bible tells us about uh, the use of money. Amen. The, the story of the Good Samaritan. Say that if you're really going to help folks, sometimes you got to go Costed. in your pocket. It's going to cost you something. Penty cost. <laughs> Amen. And so we're not asking to do what you can't do. But if you can help us, such as I have, give ID. So you can email us. Do an e-transfer. Praise God. To chosengeneration.ca at gmail.com. Or if you want to put something in the mail, make sure you send a check, personal check or money order. Uh, make sure you know something that won't you know will won't bounce off the floor praise god amen and so there is a blessing in giving you cannot outgive god we've got to upgrade our system to to accommodate you because it's not like we're going to be here for a while and it takes money to do that so please help us if you can remember tomorrow morning five to six amen and also in the evening from eight to nine we are going to be meeting for prayer Praise the name of the Lord. So don't don't miss it if you can. If you miss us in the morning, get us in the evening. If you can't make it in the evening, make sure you're there in the morning. Praise God to join us. Also on Friday morning as well. And if the Lord tarries, amen, this coming Sunday, I believe, is that when I'm meeting with the singles? Praise God. Amen. I believe this coming Sunday, i got to check the calendar. Praise God to see if my, my dates are right. But I would love to speak with all of Praise God. I would love to speak with all of the single, single ladies. Amen. I'm not talking about young adults now, but those of you who used to be married. Praise God. The young adults, those of you who used to be married or you're a, sing or you're a single parent, uh, I want to talk to y'all. We're going to send out the, the credentials so you can log on and join us. Let's talk. See how you're coping. See what we can do to help you. Amen. And maybe we could offer some strategies. So if you know anybody who is single out there, there's no man in the house, or you're a single father, praise God, you're raising the children by yourself, amen, or you used to be married, no longer married, regardless of the reason, 
We want to meet with you on Sunday evening, 6.30. Praise God. Join Pastor Christie and Lady C. And let us talk. Let us talk it over. Let us pray with you. Amen. Let's be there for you. Praise God. We have already met with the young people, the young adults, and so on and so forth. We are building back the calendar. Amen. So that we can meet with the people of God and pray for you. We love you. And Jesus loves you too. And once again, thank you for joining us. Sunday morning. Amen. 11.30. Don't miss it. There is a word from the Lord for you this Sunday. May the Lord bless you as you join us. God bless you. Thanks again for coming by here at Chosen. Uh, one more thing, our council. You know that Chosen Generation Ministries is part of the International Apostolic Body of Believers. We are part of the Canada District Council here. And our council is coming up. Early in the year, we had to cancel our May conference because we didn't know what to do and everybody was trying to figure out how long this was going to last. But since it's this long, everybody's now doing virtual and we will be having our first virtual, amen, council this coming October, amen, October. Let's see what dates we've got. I think it's the 15th, praise God, October 15th and 16th, amen. Don't miss it. Thursday and Friday, two nights only. Amen. Praise God. Don't you don't want to miss it? God bless you. Look out for the 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 opportunities to register so that you can continue the work that we are doing here in this council. Uh, I believe Lady C. I think I didn't know I had so many announcements. I believe Lady C sent out for those of you who are frontline workers. We sent out uh, a form for you to fill out if you are a nurse or work in a in a home where you know you have to take care of folks. Uh, we sent you a form. Please send it back tonight. You've got to return it tonight. We want to honor you. It's not coming to us. It's going to our international body. Your name and face, if you if they want your photo, whatever it is. But your name, at least your name and your church will be amen, included in an international representation and honoring of those who had to be on the front line. Don't miss it. Please take the time. Send it in and may the Lord continue to bless you. Lady C, final thoughts. Let's go on. Well, bless you, everybody. This was fun tonight and educational and also encouraging. We need to take care of our support system. So thanks again to everyone that loves and supports this ministry in various ways. And you must also bow your knee before the Lord Jesus Christ. Pray, worship, use those knees for what God intended. And don't let anybody knock you and injure those knees. Take care of those knees. You need them to worship God. God bless you, beloved. It was a pleasure being with you tonight. I certainly enjoyed as well. Keep praying for us. We mean well. And we'll see you again, God's willing, on Sunday morning. Take care, and may the Lord continue to bless you. We are the chosen generation. Yeah. All for to show His excellence. All I require for life, God's given me. I know who I am. We are the chosen generation. Oh